So you've been playing Apex Legends for a while, but you still haven't gotten your 4k badge. Maybe you've gotten a 2k or even a 3k badge, but you just can't reach 4k damage. Well, this video is meant to help you. Through analyzing pro players 4k damage games, I've reduced their skills to a simple strategy that you can use to consistently get higher damage. I can't promise you any 4k damage badges, that will come down to your individual skill level and how you use the info I give you, but I can promise you that you'll definitely see an improvement in your damage. First I'm going to cover all the tips that I know will help you and then I'll analyze one of my own 4k damage games to show you how to use these tips. Real quick, only 4.6% of you watching are actually subscribed. I'm trying to reach 1000 subscribers by April 20th. With that out of the way, here's tip 1. Squad up. If you're not having any luck playing with randoms, get a teammate and explain to them that you're trying to get 4k damage. This will be very helpful when I explain the strategy. The most important thing to keep in mind when you're going for 4k damage is that playing smart and playing safe is priority. Unlike a 20 bomb, you don't need to be moving as fast as possible or full sending on every team you see. Use cover, keep range, and only push when you have an advantage. This leads me to tip 2. The game structure of a 4k damage match wants to look like this. You drop at a medium hot drop, loot until you're confident to fight, and then roll through teams. Just kill everyone you can find, but don't make killing teams your priority. Your priority should still be staying alive. Always be safe when taking fights and always play smart. Keep killing people all the way up to top 5 teams or so, and at this point you'll begin damage farming for the rest of the match. Damage farming is a strategy that allows you to get thousands of damage off just one team. If you're playing with randoms, this can be quite difficult since they'll usually want to fully kill the remaining teams, but if you have a teammate, tell them to let you rack up damage from range. The best damage farming strategy is to find a strong defensive position that allows you to abuse teams with a G7. This leads me to tip 5. Your early game loadout wants to consist of powerful, closer mid-range guns. I'd recommend the R301, Hemlock, or Mastiff. Once you're halfway through the game, swap to either a G7 scout or a Hemlock then use it to farm damage, but keep a close range weapon just in case. It is very important though that you run the weapons you're good with. If you're using guns that you think will be good at getting high damage, but you keep missing shots with it, you're not going to get good damage. Your inventory wants to have room for at least 360 ammo at all times. If you find a good team to farm damage on, you want to be sure you never run out of ammo. Arc stars are useful for some extra damage if teams are hiding in buildings or behind rocks. Other than that, be sure to have enough shield healing to last a very long time. Six shield battery and 12 cells is a good place to start. A few other small tips, always thirst down players, it's a free 100 damage, and if you thirst 10 enemies, you're already a quarter of the way to 4k damage. Another thing to keep in mind is that you don't need to win to get the badge. If you need to leave your team so you can keep farming damage, do that. The last thing is that unlike a 20 bomb, you don't need a perfect game to get 4k damage. You can make plenty of mistakes or even just have a really poor early game, but with a good damage farm at the end, you can still make the game work. Alright, so with all that said, I'm now going to show you an example of how you can use these strategies to get the 4k badge. So you can see I'm landing at a sort of hot drop area um, fragment, which is the blue zone, which means I'm going to get some good loot out of this area. I'm immediately looking for an R31, R99. Luckily I find one right away, so I'm going to go and try to find some enemies to fight. I'm going to try to thirst him for an extra 100 damage. Even though I hear fighting going off right now, I know that I don't need to be involved with it since I'm not healthy enough. Again, even though those enemies are someone I can fight, I'm not going to take that because I know that it's just not worth it. Now that my team's here, I know I'm safe to start this fight. Again, always playing the safe route, even though I could have fully sent on to them, I went upstairs, got the shield swap, and I was fully healthy before I re-engaged. I make a risky play here by leaving my team, but as you'll see... Down. More enemies down. 
I end up getting quite lucky here. I find another enemy, first him, take his loot. As you can see, I'm grabbing as many shield batteries and ammo as I can. Uh, that was interesting. Reloading. Killed one myself. Leaving behind me. Wow, looks like that was the last one in the squad. Nice choice. So right here I see that there's a care package. I know that this is something that's going to attract some enemy teams. And I actually spot a team on the hill above me. Before they can get onto the care package, I'm going to try to take an offensive position on them. But as soon as I get hit with that triple take, I know I have to back out. I hear them chasing me, so I try to back up all the way. So now that I hear my teammates engaging in the fight, I know I can move in. for some more damage I killed an enemy and full kill that team so as I said before you can make several mistakes in one game and still have it turn out okay and what you'll see right here is I actually make a pretty crucial mistake so I noticed that I don't have a lot of ammo so I decide to actually swap to a triple take now this is a situation where I thought the triple take was going to be good for farming damage, but it turns out I'm not actually very good with it. So what you'll see is my shots were a bit shaky and I could have potentially gotten even more damage had I been using the correct weapon. Thank you. So right here I'm ziplining up and it turns out there's a team right above me. Try to get some shots off as quick as I can. And I get a knock here. I move into thirst stunt knock, but I get stunned. So what you're seeing is right now I'm trying to begin farming damage on this team. Since they're both running long range weapons, I know that I can sort of peek at them and slowly tick down their health, but still allowing them to heal afterwards. My teammate's full sending, so I know I have to go in and help him out. I get one knock, try to thirst, but then the lifeline takes as well. So we full kill that team. So right there, I actually overlooked the G7 scout that I definitely should have taken. But since there was another team shooting us, I, I managed to not see it in the moment. So as you see, I'm just going to slowly shoot people from range, playing as safe as I can. Heads up. 
I get crabbed, I know I have to get out of that spot as quick as I can. Otherwise, I'm very, very dead. There's a very big fight happening in front of us that just ended. My teammates are moving in to fight it, so I know that I'm going to be able to fight this as well. Right here I actually got very unlucky, trying to thirst that enemy, it actually ended up getting me knocked. So what you see is instead of fighting, I actually tell my team, hey let's go to zone, and just play zone on this team. And that's exactly what we do, we move out, get in front of this team, and I actually get some free shots on them moving. So I'm just trying to get as much damage on this team as I can. But as you'll see, since I have a triple take, I'm not very good with this weapon. I would definitely recommend using a G7 Scout, unless you are like really good with uh, sniper rifles. So I hear my teammate call that they just revving and ulted, so I know that I'm going to have to shoot them to send them back. send one back but our teammate gets full sent on he actually gets knocked so i'm gonna go and look at his angle but since i have two medium range weapons i'm gonna play my range and i'm not gonna push in to try and fight that i'm gonna leave and try to tell my caustic to do the same So we rotate out, we're going to try to get a high ground position on this team. So I say, alright, well that team was below this ridge, so if we try to play on top of the ridge, there's a chance we can get some free shots here. I'm looking around for them, I'm not seeing anyone, so I'm going to keep moving up. I find them, I realize that they are right on the other end of the ridge here. I don't like our positioning. Giving my shields a recharge. So I'm actually going to fully leave. I'm going over there. Recharging shield. Grenade. And I decide that I'm gonna go play the safe zone. I cracked that lifeline, so I'm going to stop shooting her. Deploying a variable. Adding another gas trap. Gas trap deployed. She's no recharging. And this is basically all you're going to want to do. Keep a team locked back at range and just keep shooting them. You just want to repeatedly shoot and let them heal and then shoot them and let them heal. This way you can get as much damage off of each team as possible. So like I said, if I was playing a G7 scout, I would likely have way more damage here because I just keep missing my shots. It's very possible to do this on more than one team. Typically you'll find yourself only farming the last team of the game, but it is definitely possible to farm during the mid game if you really need to. Sometimes you'll just find the perfect team that you can easily farm on. So 
see that their whole team is trying to fully push me, so I'm gonna heal up as quick as I can and prepare for their assault. I'm just waiting for them to climb up on roof. I see one starting to climb. I get three shots on him. And there you have another reason why you'd want to keep a close range weapon. If they try to fully push you and you're alone, you're going to have to have some more damage at close range. But again, that's just one of those mistakes I made. But even so, regardless of that mistake, I was still able to easily get 4200 damage in that game. Thank you all so much for watching. If you learned anything at all from this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more videos like this, and peace out.